This week, I met Ray Sanford Simpson. That is Don and Sarah's new son, little brother to Maeve. So frail, so perfect, so fresh from God. He was only a week old, and it was all I could do to refrain from touching his little fingers or caressing his little cheek. I always have two reactions to newborns. One is that I want to scoop them up and hold them close to protect them and care for them and love them. And the other is more like a scene from a Disney movie with drums beating softly in the background and the music building into a spectacular crescendo. And I want to lift that baby up to God with awe and wonder and praise and joy and give thanks to God for placing this blessed child into our circle of life. Sometimes we are pr privileged to have that Disney Lion King moment during a child's baptism when we promise to both hold them close and to hold them up as they grow and mature and live into God's blessings. In the movie Lion King, which made the Elton John ballad Circle of Life world famous, Simba is presented on Pride Rock twice. Once as a cub when he is lifted up for his blessing, and then again at the end of the movie, after he has survived life lessons and faced and defeated evil and matured into the pride's leader. The first time when the circle of life plays, I focus on the words of the verse, which are, there are, is more to see than can be seen. There is more to do than can be done. But in the last scene, it is the chorus that captures my imagination. They sing, it is the circle of life, and it moves us all through despair and hope, through faith and love, until we find our place on the path unwinding in the circle of life. Until we find our place. Baptism is an outward and visible sign of our place. Our place in the world, our place in the family of God, and our place in God's heart. When babies are baptized, their parents make promises on their behalf, but the goal is for each child that they will one day affirm their faith and make their own promises to renounce the wickedness of the world, to take up their God-given freedom and power to fight for fight to resist injustice and fight oppression, and to claim Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Confirmation, when, confession, when, con when we confess our faith to the world, is another proud and mystical and meaningful moment in a person's life, and in the congregation's life. Baptisms, confirmations, weddings, we are so blessed to be part of people's celebrations. And we're also blessed to be part of their tragedies. I'm not saying that we should seek tragedy. I am acknowledging that tragedy is part of life. It's part of the circle of life. Pete Seeger put the words of Ecclesiastes 3 to music in the song, Turn, 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 singing, For everything there is a season, turn, 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 and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to reap, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to laugh and a time to weep. The difference between Pete Seeger's song and the poetry of Ecclesiastes is that the poet continued on to say that God is with us in all of our seasons. God is in our times of awe and wonder, 
in newborn babies, in fresh spring flowers, in sunrises and mountaintop vistas. God is with us in all of those positive moments. God is also with us as we walk through the shadows of life's valleys. In song and poetry, we hear these lists of opposites of birth and death and planting and reaping and laughing and weeping, and we assign the values, good and bad, and we tend to think that God is in the good. It's because we're afraid of darkness. Ever since we were little children playing outside on a summer evening, we have been taught to come home when it gets dark. Come inside, be safe, come away from the dark. But God created both day and night, light and dark, laughing and weeping, and God is with us in it all. These pairs exist in balance, not just opposition. Barbara Brown Taylor, in her bestseller, Learning to Walk in the Darkness, reminds us that throughout the Bible, God came to people in darkness. When Abraham was in excruciating doubt, God led him outside to gaze at the nighttime sky and count the stars as a reminder of God's promise for Abraham's descendants. The exodus from Egypt happened at night. Manna fell from the desert skies at night. And think about all the people in the Bible who heard from God, just as Joseph did, in dreams. It was at night that an angel told Joseph to take Mary as his wife, because the child she carried would be our Savior. Theologian C.S. Lewis says that God whispers to us in our pleasures speaks to us in our conscience, but shouts to us in our pain. The Psalms are conversations with God that have stood the test of time. Today's scripture is an example of our life with God, the circle of life, our seasons of life. Psalm 30 was purportedly, purportedly written by David, the shepherd king, as a very personal prayer of thanksgiving and praise and repentance and joy, and yet it has become a very important public prayer in both the Jewish and Christian traditions because in just 12 lines, the poet reveals the full circle of life for all of humanity. He speaks of our fears, of our faults, self-confidence, of our vulnerability, mortality, and the possibility of hope and deliverance. It begins with Thanksgiving. He was ill. God healed him. He is truly grateful. In his elation and gratitude, he invites all of us to praise our Lord. For God's anger lasts but a moment, and his favor is eternal. He says, Weeping may linger through the night, but joy comes in the morning. David was a very interesting character. He was both a great king and a vulnerable human being capable of great mistakes. So as he fleshes out this story, we hear that this time his sin was overconfidence. He had come to believe that through his own efforts he was secure forever, forgetting that his source of well-being was God. Realizing that he was out of tune with God, he altered his behavior, cried out for mercy. God answered, and David's wailing is turned into gladness, expressed with song and dance. God is with us in our negative and positive experience. God loves us. God is good. And we are more than puppets in some theatrical performance of joy and sorrow. 
We are part of God's blessed congregation. We have been given the power to be creative and transformative. We co-create with God in our poetry, in our songs, in our hymns, in all forms of our art, and in our parenting and teaching, in our business practices, and in our ministries. The sheep on this morning's bulletin cover live on the Hopkins farm. They are part of the Hopkins Sacred Creation Ministry. A great deal, an abundance of love and prayer has been poured into their fields and farm so that others can have fresh, nutritious vegetables and fruit and woolly little lambs can be born. Courageously birthing new ideas into existence is a vital part of our circle of life. We choose how we spend our time and energy. We have the power of transformation as well. We have the power to change and grow and mature. And as promised at our baptisms and adult confessions of faith, we have the power to relieve suffering and combat injustice in order to transform our communities and the lives of others. God has blessed us so that we can be a blessing to others. The circle of life is not a direct progression through birth and trial and creative ministry and change. It's more like a dance, weaving together our positives and negatives, our creative and transformative, transformative moments. And this complex dance our Lord was with us to inspire us with divine music, to show us new steps, to redirect us, or to grab hold of us and lift us over the tough spots. How will you participate in this dance? Tomorrow, I will preside at the funeral of Kevin McKay, a 34-year-old, who was a loving husband to Kate, and an awesome dad to seven-year-old Olivia and five-year-old Reese. He's not a member of our congregation, but he was a member of our greater community who danced the circle of life well. Two years ago, he was diagnosed with an aggressive form of brain cancer. And during the last 24 months, he chose to follow the advice of ESP Award winner Jim Valvono. To know where you came from, to know where you are, and to know where you're going, and in all of that, never give up. Kevin evaluated where he came from, what skills and resources he had. He decided how he wanted to live the days he had left, giving top priority to his wife and children. He really enjoyed coaching his son's football team and his daughter's lacrosse team. He developed plans to transform the lives of those living with brain tumors. And he put together a team of 247 people who called themselves Kevin Strong and raised $70,000 in 2017 and $90,000 in 2018. 18, the most in all of the D.C. area, for the National Brain Tumor Society. Cancer stopped him physically, but it didn't change the heart and soul of who he was. He gave his all so that his family would know that they were truly loved, and he left a legacy of determination so that others could live fully and transform their corners of their world. We are blessed to be with this family tomorrow as they remember, honor, and celebrate the way Kevin lived the life that God gave him. God created 
everything in this world and saw that it was good. God created humankind, and that's good too. And as followers of Christ, we know our place in this circle of life. We are called to dance through awe and wonder, trials and tragedy, creativity and transformation, and with God's help, we will be a blessing for others. There is a season and a purpose for everything. God loves you with a great, unstoppable love. May you live fully knowing your place in the circle of life. Amen.